So we just finished discussing linear approximation, and now I want to introduce the concept known as a differential. Let f be a function differentiable at x. Let delta x, also denoted by dx, be a small given number, so some small number like 0 0.01 or 0 0.001. The differential dy, this is what we're defining here, the differential dy is defined as f prime of x delta x, the derivative of f times the small number delta x. Let's look at what this means graphically. What is the differential? What's it trying to capture? So we have our function, and we've got some information about some point A, let's say. So here's f of A. Looks very similar to what we did with linear approximation, and it is. We're just going to focus on a particular part of that discussion. Now, what I'm interested in is what's going on a little bit away. Say at f of x. I have information about the function and its derivative at this point. So I have its tangent line. So the tangent line here, which was also the linearization, is uh, y equals l of x, which is f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. Where does this delta x fit into the picture? Delta x, which is also dx, is how much we've moved over. So that's our delta x. So this x here could also be written as a plus delta x. And so the function value up here could also be written as f of a plus delta x. If I move over delta x units, how much do I have to move up to get back onto the function? Up in this case, just because our, our derivative is positive, you can have an analogous picture where the derivative was negative, and then it'd be how far do you have to move down to get back onto the function. But in this case, how much do I have to move up to get back onto the function? Well, that's what we called in the past this distance here is what we've called delta y, or the change in y. Change in y. And what is delta y, then? Well, it would be f of a plus delta x minus f of a. It's that distance. How far do we have to move up to get on the tangent line? So that's another question. If I move delta x units over, how far do I have to move up to get onto the curve? Delta y. How much do I have to move up to get onto the tangent line? How much do I have to move up to get onto the tangent line? What's this distance here? Well, that's what we're calling dy, the differential. That's where this differential fits into the diagram. That distance, this is the differential. So geometrically, that's what it should be. Then how do we get that it's the derivative times delta x? Well, let's just think about this. If that height is dy, and this distance here is delta x, then what's rise over run, or the height times the base? Well, that should be the slope of that line. But the slope of the line is the derivative. So from this differential, we have that dy by delta x should be f prime of a. Or in other words, dy is f prime of a delta x. And that's what we've defined the differential to be here in the definition box. So here's the geometric description. It's just the height here in the diagram, how far you have to move up to get back onto the tangent line. And working with that height, we get the expression for how the differential is related to the derivative and the change in x. And that's what we've taken then as our definition. Because of the fact that this change in y, there's two different changes, one that gets you back onto the tangent line, which is the dy, or the height change that gets you back onto the curve, which is the delta y. It would be nice to have two similar notions for the change in x, but there's really only one change in x that we consider. So that's why we've, just to make the notation sort of nice and symmetric, we've also defined this notation dx to be the, mean the same thing as delta x. So this thing could also be written as dx. So that means we could write this as f prime of x dx also. And the nice thing about this is 
gives us a, a, a nice cute way to remember what the differential is. If we think about Leibniz and Newton notation, Leibniz notation for a derivative is dy by dx. Newton's notation for a derivative, or the, the Newton uh, notation that we've been using, is f prime of x. Notice in Leibniz we're not supposed to think of dy by dx as a fraction, because then we'd have to interpret what a dy means individually and a dx means individually. Ah, but we have done that just here. We've defined this dy to be a differential and this dx to be a change in x. So we could think of this as a fraction now, dy by dx. And if we multiply both sides by dx, we get the equation for the differential. So that's a very nice way that Leibniz notation interacts with Newton's notation and gives rise to uh, a way to remember what the differential is. Okay, so let's have a look. Why is this important? Well, the idea is that if we look at f of a plus delta x, that's the value of the point on the curve, it should be approximately the value of the point on the tangent line. The value of the point on the tangent line, well, we know the tangent line, we have an equation for it. So if I work out the tangent line and plug this thing into the tangent line, that means I'm plugging it right here into the linearization, then I get that the a's cancel off, and I get that f of a plus delta, uh, f of a plus dx is approximately f of a plus this little adjustment factor. What's that adjustment factor? Well, that's exactly dy. That's how much I had to move up to get onto the tangent line. That's how much I had to move up to get on the tangent line. And we're saying, well, that's roughly how much you should have to move up to get back onto the curve. So that's why we have this approximation here. So f of a plus dx is f of a plus, or is, is approximately f of a, plus the differential. That's where the differential comes in. It's really looking at linear approximation and saying what was that adjustment factor. How much did you have to move up from where you started to get back on the curve? You roughly move up by the differential. So what does this mean exactly? Well, it means that the differential is approximately this quantity here, and that's what we've called delta y. So the change in y can be approximated by the differential. The differential we can compute using the derivative. The change in y is just the difference in the function values. So let's just look at a quick example of computing a differential. So find the differential of y equals cosine of x for x equals, let's say, pi by uh, 4, maybe, and uh, dx, which is delta x, being, I don't know, let's say 0 0.1. So find the differential. Well, the differential is dy, which is the derivative, times dx. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine x times dx. And in the particular instant we're looking at, dy is equal to negative sine of pi by 4 times dx. What's pi, sine of pi by 4? That's 1 over root 2, so that's negative 1 over root 2 times 0 0.1. Or in other words, that is negative 1 over root 2, 10, 10 times root 2. Negative 1 over 10 times root 2. So there's the differential. What does this mean geometrically? It's a good idea to always have a geometric interpretation of these things. So we've got our cosine function sort of oscillating around. This is pi by 2. Um, pi by 4 is right in the middle there. This is asking the question that if you start at pi by 4 and you move over 0 0.1 units, so I move over 0 0.1 somewhere over here. Let's put that in a different color. I move over to 0 0.1, and I want to know how far I have to drop to get back onto the curve. Well, the differential tells you how far you have to get back on, drop to get back onto the tangent line. So that's a rough estimate of how far you have to get back onto the curve. So the differential is roughly how much this, what the change is. That's actually delta y, the actual change in the function, but this is approximated by the differential dy, which we found to be negative 1 over 10 root 2. So that's roughly how much you have to drop. If you move over 0.1 units, how far do you have to drop to get back onto the curve? 
roughly negative 1 over 10 root 2. That's what the differential means. So let's just look at one last example involving the differential. So here we've got the Earth, and we're given that the equatorial radius of the Earth is approximately 3,960 miles. Suppose we have a wire that's tightly wrapped around the Earth at the equator. So we can indicate that, uh, just think of this blue curve that I just draw, uh, drawn as the wire. Approximately how much must this wire be lengthened if it, be, if it is to be strung all the way around the Earth on poles 10 feet high above the ground? So imagine we now have to lengthen the wire a little bit so that we can get it to sit on top of sort of 10 foot poles all the way around the Earth here. How much do we have to lengthen the wire by? So this is an interesting question in the sense that can we come up with an idea of how much the wire has to be lengthened? Does it make sense to lengthen it by, I mean, should the answer be a foot, 10 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet, 1,000 feet, a million feet? Can we get a rough idea as to how much we have to lengthen it by? And we can, using a differential, gives us a, a, a nice way to interpret this result. So what we're going to do is we're going to let, um, let's let L of R equal to the length of wire around a circle of radius R. So I'm imagining here that, you know, let's see, wrapped around the Earth's equator, that's one value of r. 10-foot poles is another value of r. We're really interested in, once we wrap the string around a circle of radius r, what is the length of that string? So we could compute exactly what the length of the, the wire is around the equator, and then we could compute exactly what the length of the wire is on these 10-foot poles, compute exactly what the difference is. We could do that, but I want to show you how you can use differentials to uh, get a, an approximation, or in this case, we'll see an exact value. So what are we interested in? We're interested in knowing what is delta L as R changes from R equals 3,960 to R plus delta R plus a small change in r, which is 3,960, plus, so that's miles, maybe I'll indicate that here, miles, plus another 10 feet. So we're thinking of this as our change in the radius, 10 foot change in radius. What is the change? So we want to know what the change in the length is as we increase the radius of this circle. Ah, but the change in length, this is, this is the cool part, the change in length is roughly the differential. What's the differential? The differential is the derivative, L prime of R, times the change in R, delta R. Okay, so I just need to know the derivative of L. Well, what's L? L is the length of wire uh, around a circle of radius R. Oh, well, that's simple enough. That's just 2 pi R. So what's its derivative? Its derivative is 2 pi. So this is 2 pi. So maybe I'll put brackets here to indicate that that's the description of the function, and there's the actual value of the function. So this is 2 pi times delta r. So what is delta l approximately? What's the change in the length of wire? It's approximately 2 pi times delta r. What was delta r? Delta r was 10 feet. So this is approximately 20 pi feet. And so we just need to lengthen the wire by about a little over 60 feet. A little over 60 feet we need to lengthen the wire in order to get it on the top of all these 10-foot poles all the way around the Earth. And we got that pretty quickly by using the differential. As I said, you could do this exactly. You could work out the circumference of the circle of the raised wire. You could work out the circumference of the circle around the equator and take their difference. In this case, when you do that, since the, the function, the circumference function is just linear, you're going to get the same result, exactly the same result. Because if you think about it, the differential, we're using the tangent line to approximate the function. 
But if the function's already linear, then the tangent line is exactly equal to the function. So you could work out what delta L is exactly, and you'll find that these are equivalent. So maybe I'll just write it in here. In this particular instance, these are actually just equal to each other. So the change in the length of wire is 25 feet. All right, that's it for this section. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.